We're going to take a quick step back into technology past. But first, we're going to look at what we have today and then compare it to what we had then. Today, I have this smartphone. This is a, an iPhone 5S. It is a fairly advanced piece of technology in relation to what we're going to see. And regardless of whether your iPhone or Android is irrelevant here, they're both amazing technologies. They're both amazing devices. They can do quite a bit. Um, you know, with this device, I can communicate to anyone in the world. I can, you know, store up to 16 gigabytes worth of media files. I can stream media files, movies, music, etc. I can play just about any game using emulators and or uh, running them natively in the OS. I can do practically anything with this phone that I can do with my MacBook over here. Um, and I carry it with me every day. It's in my pocket all the time. It's not a day where I go without using this phone. And if I don't have it with me, I feel like I'm completely useless. It just goes to show how much technology has been ingrained in my life without... And, and it wasn't such a shock. It was just... It, it gradually... Um, became more and more prevalent uh, in my daily activities. And let's take a look at some devices that we had before we had smartphones. Before smartphones we had cell phones. This is a flip phone that I actually used up until approximately 2011. All it does is make and receive calls. And while it may have a very basic web browser built in, I never activated it and it never did anything more than make and receive calls and store phone numbers. When I was in high school, I had this. This is a PDA. This is the exact model PDA that I had in ninth grade. And I was using this to take notes in class and then transfer them to my computer over a serial connection so that I would be able to keep a running log of um, what was happening in class and uh, use it for studying purposes. Um, this is a Sharp Y0190. And in fact, you can still buy these new. Um, they're still out there. This one I bought brand new um, in the original packaging just a couple years ago, just to just for fun. <laughs> and um, and after that, I had a um, a Palm M100 or M105 PDA, which I don't seem to have with me here. But prior to that, we were always looking for new and unique and innovative ways to make data portable, to make it something that we can carry with us every day so we can reference phone numbers, to-do lists, uh, anniversaries, calendar, important dates, uh, appointments, stuff like that. And Timex came up with the perfect solution in 1994 with this, the Timex Datalink watch. This was the world's first smartwatch. This is one of the original models this is the Model 150. This was the more expensive one. Um, and it featured some very innovative technology for 1994, including the just two-year-old technology of the Indiglo display. The Indiglo display is an electroluminescence panel that sits behind the LCD screen that illuminates it when it's charged electrically. These types of displays were nothing new in 1992, uh, as they originated in some of the early laptop displays. Um, for example, the uh, Zenith, all Zenith laptops prior to 1990, 1990 or 89 or so, all had those EL displays. Uh, there were other companies using them too. Um, Hyundai, for example. Toshiba had, had been using them. Um, and it was Timex who made the technology more compact and able to fit in a watch. If you've owned a watch in the 80s, 70s, or 80s or so that had a, a backlit display, it would have been illuminated by a single ink, tiny incandescent bulb that sucked up the battery that was kind of stuck in the um, in left or right of the uh, of the LCD panel and. Um, would have provided a very dim, barely readable amount of uh, light. So the Indiglo itself was revolutionary. In fact, this watch, this particular one, um, features the Indiglo color scheme that was, or that was quite popular back then. In 19, when the uh, 
Uniqlo watches were becoming a thing. Um, now this one is not brand new. It is used, uh, fairly lightly used it seems. But let's go over some of what it offers. Now this was basically um, a very lower, uh, much lower powered, you know, less, less uh, capable version of this YL190 organizer. Um, but it had features that were characteristic of pocket organizers that were produced in the mid 80s to the early 90s. So we're going to go over some of its features. It includes the ability to store phone numbers, flight schedules, credit card numbers, birthdays, anniversaries, social security numbers, police, fire, medical numbers, frequent flyer numbers, clothing sizes, car inspections, locker combinations, pin numbers, sports schedules, formulas, equations, hotel information, best restaurants, oil changes, shopping lists, doctor appointments, dentist appointments, kids stuff. Don't know what kids stuff is, but it could store it. A lot, oh, I know, like how old is Johnny? Oh, he's 10. Um, alarms, custom alarm beeps, train schedules, important meetings, travel directions, 40 word notes, time activities, security codes, license numbers, exchange rates, pet care data, daycare numbers, TV programs, and many more. It could also be expanded using apps. So it may be one of the first devices ever produced that you could download additional apps for from the internet um, to expand its capabilities. Now this was when the internet was still a brand new concept so those apps by the way were available mail order mostly. You would actually send in um, a request form or an order form to Timex and they would send you a catalog and you would pick out from the catalog what you wanted and they would send you a floppy disk. I mean that's that's crazy. But that's how it was in the 90s. The internet was still coming of age. Um, Indiglo was brand new. And just having a computer in the household was considered a luxury. It really was. Um, and in fact, this computer here is much newer than this watch, but it's close enough, so we're going to use it for the demonstration. So let's take the watch out of its package. Now, I bought this for $3 at a local consignment shop that also sells donated items for charity. It's a it's a very, very nice, um, very nice little shop. In fact, that's where I bought my uh, 1949 GE Vortelex as well as my um, 1911 electric heater. So I got a couple of different items from this place. I'm really happy with what they've what they've uh, what they've come up with. Stuff that I would buy, you know. Um, in the box, we still have all of the original paperwork. We have the uh, free membership to CompuServe. They were really pushing that. Uh, anytime you bought anything electronic, it seems, in the 90s, there was always advertisements for, um, for ISPs, CompuServe and AOL being the most prevalent. And uh, here's an order form. This is how you, you could sign up. You have to mail in your, your, your sign-up sheet and information. This would get you one free month of unlimited access to over 100 valuable basic services. CompuServe Information Manager, Windows or Mac, $15 usage credit good toward exploring optional extended services, a complimentary subscription to CompuServe's monthly magazine, which you know is on paper, <laughs> of course, uh, personal user ID number and private email box, internet made easy, trademark. Um, still there. I mean, just, uh, this, this is stuff, by the way, that people are going to look at 50 years from now and say, holy shit, <laughs> the internet, which we now have built into our bodies, was so different back then. We got an original copy of the Datalink version 2.0 software. We have here the advertisement and order form for the notebook adapter. So if you did not have a CRT display, which we'll get into in just a moment, um, you can buy this item which will allow you to transfer the data over a serial connection optically to the phone, uh, to, the, to, the, to the watch. Yes, wireless communication, a very primitive form of wireless data transfer, um, which you're going to get to see, and it's so cool. Um, let's see, we've got our French quick start guide, wee oui, wee. Oui. Uh, we got our 
English quick start guide. We've got our advertisement for Microsoft Schedule Plus, which this is fully compatible with and integrated with. Schedule Plus uh, was a schedule manager that Microsoft released. Uh, I think they, I think it came out around the time Windows 95 came out, um, but it has a price of ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents, ninety five cents USD. Um, but there's also an advertisement here for Office for Windows 95 Professional, which costs six hundred dollars, mm. which is about what it costs now, I think. Um, we have the order form for the Wrist App software. Now you can you can actually buy um, a sample disk of all kinds of different uh, Wrist App software. That's what they call the apps, by the way. Um, not much different from your your uh, i your iWatch apps, only they are different. We've got a golf scorekeeper. Keep score for all 18 holes. Display front nine and back nine scores. Recall all scores. Always know the score. How many times can you write score? Copy me game. Challenge you, challenges you to match the patterns displayed on your watch. Keeps you busy while waiting for that flight. Because the up-and-coming businessman of the 90s was always on planes. That's just how it worked. Because he didn't have teleconferencing, apparently. Um, a pulse calculator. Get this. Instead of tracking your pulse like a modern smartwatch does by actually reading your pulse, uh, this is an application that allows you to determine your pulse. Um, it says, displays your pulse rate in beats per minute. Get great workout companion. Know when it's time to relax. But you were supposed to manually read your pulse, and the watch would help you figure out what your pulse rate is. It's yeah. <laughs> Value converter. Conversion tables for currency, distance, temperature on your watch. Great for traveling. Um, I have an application just like that on my iPhone. I use it all the time. World time. Displays, stores 24 time zones. Always know what time it is anywhere in the world. Again, for the ultimate business traveler. Um, you've got our read me first and keep me safe. Uh, this is your data link software license agreement and warranty. Business reply mail. Timex Corporation, P.O. Box 2740, Little Rock, Arkansas. And there's your, uh, you fill out your information. Now this was never filled out, unfortunately. It'd be kind of nice to know what the original owner uh, made, I guess. I don't know. Also came with a brand new, uh, fresh from the factory, uh, leather optional band. Now this was the business band and you're gonna see I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what it has currently. Now this this watch came with two bands. You had the the uh, default indigo color, indigo color scheme band which, uh, which was very popular for the early 90s Timex products. Um, a lot of the early indigo watches really emphasized that they had indigo by providing you with indigo accents all over the place from the the crystal or bezel uh, area it's all painted in indigo and you've got your indigo watch band I remember being at Walmart my dad was in the market for a new watch and he was looking at the new indigo watches indigo watches sorry um, and they had this beautiful display on the counter it was a it had an indigo indigo watch inside of this big black box and you look inside the big black box and you press a button and it would activate the indigo backlight feature and it was the most amazing thing um, this was in 93 by the way and he ended up buying a Swiss Army watch so there's that um, she still has still wears it to this day but uh, yeah so you could you could use the the contemporary styled indigo watch band or you can switch to the business casual watch band which um, I think they both look quite nice and the fact that this one has never been used is kinda nice too uh, but this watch band is a little worse for the wear it's got some some of the leather is deteriorating pretty badly and uh, it's still wearable though it's still wearable alright when I bought this watch back in the summer, I immediately ran over to Radio Shack and I put a battery in it. But I found one major flaw. It was missing the contact from the buzzer to the, um, the, the circuit board inside the watch. 
So the buzzer does not work in this model, in this particular unit. I'm going to try to find another one just like this and repair it or fix up the other one. I'm not sure which, depending on what kind of condition it's in. But you can find these on eBay all over the place uh, for you know, anywhere from like ten to a hundred dollars um, depending on condition. Uh, this one I paid, like I said, three dollars for this thing. And uh, it was a good find, I think. But anyway, on with the show. So, I had been spending, uh, every couple of months I would, uh, you know, play with it a little bit. I would, I installed the software on my Windows 98 PC and I tried getting it to transfer data so how it transfers data is by displaying a series of pulsating bars on your CRT display, which doesn't work on a laptop display because the laptop display doesn't have the same refresh rate as a CRT does. Uh, I believe the laptop LCD displays um, are on a fixed refresh rate, which is, I think, I should look into that, but um, nevertheless, it doesn't, it doesn't flicker like a CRT does, and it depends on that flickering to, uh, to transfer information. And what you're supposed to do is literally hold the watch about a foot away from the CRT while it's in communication mode, and it will beam the information right to the optical sensor located right on the top center around the 12 o'clock position on the watch. It's also worth noting that this watch, and I think I mentioned it earlier, was a um, this was a device that NASA had approved for their astronauts um, for keeping track of certain information while in mission. So that was um, that was quite interesting. And of course, naturally, Timex used that in all of their advertisements. In fact, I think it might even say it on this box somewhere. No, actually, it doesn't. Now there is some controversy. I don't know, and I don't believe this is genuinely a Timex 150. I think it might be the model down from the 150, and I believe this watch was actually the older version that the gentleman who owned this um, had prior to upgrading to a newer one. Um, and I believe the fact that the buzzer doesn't work may be part of why that upgrade was made. I don't know for sure. Um, without a functioning buzzer, it's kind of hard to tell whether or not data transmission was successful because it beeps after you transmit data, which this one is unfortunately quite mute. I made a new spring to uh, to connect the uh, the buzzer to the to the board, but that did not work. A new contact spring, it didn't work, um, so it's still quite mute. Um, so here we go. Let's take a look at the software. And I, um, we're going to put in some information, and we're going to beam it over to the watch. Uh, currently, the watch, I deliberately erased everything that was on it, and I changed the time to be the wrong time and the wrong date and everything. So I can show you guys that it even transfers uh, the correct date and time. Which is basically what it does is I believe it erases the watch. Um, any data that is in the watch remains intact unless that particular memory slot is being overwritten. The actual capacity of this watch, by the way, so I believe that this watch is in fact a Model 70 possibly because it's, while they don't advertise the exact amount of onboard storage, the model is correspondent to the rough number of phone numbers that the phone can store. And in this case, it will be 70 phone numbers. Um, I don't believe this is actually a 150. Like I said earlier, it's likely a replacement watch. Um, if anyone knows for for a fact uh, how to figure out what the model number is, because it's not printed anywhere, um, it's possible that it was part of the... Now, this used to have a, uh, a painted, like a silvery paint on the entire watch bezel, and um, that is all worn off. It's possible that the model number could have been part of that, I don't know. It's not on the back either. So let's get on to it. We're going to take a look at this software. I've zoomed in just a little bit. I'm going to zoom in a little more. And then we're going to go ahead and transfer some data. Let me zoom in there just a tad bit. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make up a couple of appointments. I'm going to say that on 2-14, which is tomorrow, 17, 
at 10 a.m. I have a doctor's appointment. Okay. On 2.17, 17, 17, at approximately 11 a.m., I have, um, let's see, oil change on my car. I don't, but hey, that's not the point. Um, on 4, 7, and 4, 7, 17, at 9 a.m., I have um, Let's see, let's do a dentist appointment. There we go. So we've got a couple of appointments in there. Now, the options are to send the appointments for the next 330 days through 1 of 08. 0108 uh, of, that would be 1 of 108 of um, GER <laughs> 2018. Um, you can select the pre notification alert or beep. 15 minutes before, 10 minutes before, 5 minutes before, etc., etc., or 30 minutes before. Or do not send appointments, which will keep these in memory here, but it won't transfer them to the watch and use up valuable memory on the watch. Anniversaries. Let's see. 1 1 2017 or 18. Um, we have a uh, new year. Send anniversaries occurring within three months, six months, or one year. Um, for some reason, oh, you know why? Because I have it set to three months. So we're going to set it to one year so that appointment will be sent to the watch. Phone numbers. Phone numbers, phone numbers. Let's see, Bob Smith, number 355-6252, type, home, work, fax, cellular, or pager. Remember, this is 1994 this software was created, so, or 96-ish. Bob Smith, Dave Smith, 603-6252. Six, dip, 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 do. I don't even. I don't know anybody by these names. That's his cellular number. Okay. Um, Jane Doe. Uh, six oh three. Six five six six five seven seven. That's her home number. Mary Jane. 603, uh, 123, and that is going to be her fax number. Okay, so we've got some phone numbers in there. We're going to hit OK. It's going to send them on over to the phone. Make a list, and we're going to check it twice. Grocery shop. Let's see, I'm going to make a grocery list. We need, let's see, eggs. We need bacon. Is that a list or? Yeah, that's going to be our grocery list. I'm going to need some, some, uh, some lettuce. I'm going to need some OJ. I need some, uh, uh, let's see, laundry detergent. You can set priority, so it can be a prioritized list or simply a grocery list. You need some um, hot dogs. I need some ketchup. Burgers. Okay, that's enough. We've now used 21% of the phone of the watch's memory. I almost said phone. Time settings. We're going to set the, we're going to use PC clock settings which are currently correct 2:05 p.m. on 2/13/2017. We can set it to a 24-hour format or we can set daylight savings time. Because this computer was made 
or I'm sorry, the operating system is made prior to the George Bush era uh, DST switch over that he didn't need to do but did anyway. Um, the DST settings will never be correct, unfortunately. Um, we can even change the time zone as well from here. We can set a couple of alarms. We've got a 12 o'clock p.m. lunch. I've got, um, let's see, wake up at 5 a.m. That takes up alarm number two slot. We're going to call this wake up. Uh, wake up. There we go. Now this allows us to make it audible or not. Okay. I think three alarms is okay. Uh, let's see. Um, 10 o'clock p.m. sleep. That's good. Perfect. Send all alarms. Or do not send alarms. So you can select what you want to send. Now this is one of the things that I honestly suspect um, to be, this is why I don't think this is a Model 150. Because if I select, go to File and Advanced, and I select Data Link Watch 150, not only does it increase the amount of available memory, because we're now using 9%, but it also gives me the ability to download wrist apps, or install wrist apps. You know what? Let's 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 give this a try. Um, I don't think this is going to work, but I'm going to add a stopwatch wrist app. So let's see. Week of the year. Week of the year displays what week of the year it is. Displays what day of the year it is. Displays how many days are left in the year. That sounds interesting. We're going to send that one on over. Okay. Watch sounds. You can actually download different watch alarm sounds. For example, high tones, low tones, short appointment tones. Easy does it. That's easy does it. Now this is 1995 or so. This was Groovin. The, the names that they gave these, Easy Living. Are you serious? Spicy. Hazley. These all sound the same. Wild. Ah, eh, something not right about that. That's weird. It's like the um, it's like it's clock dependent, and this clock speed is too high for it. Imagine that. Okay, let's send watch sounds. Let's do it. Enable hourly chime. Enable button beep. Okay, let's send it on over. Send to watch. Now we're going to communication mode by pressing the green button until it says communication mode. Now here's where there's a problem. And this is, again, why I don't believe this is a real 150. Because if I hit send to watch, it says it should say version 2.0 on communication ready screen, but it doesn't say the 2.0. But we're going to try it anyway, and we're going to see what happens. Okay, I'm going to hold the watch about like this. I'm going to zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so here we go. We're going to hold the watch like that. And we're going to hit OK. Here we go. did not succeed. We're going to try it again. 
And then we're going to drop it down to the the older version of the watch and we're going to see if that works. But I don't believe that this is going to work, but I figure it's worth worth a shot. It did not work. So we're going to drop it down to the old fashioned data link watch. Hit OK. Now that, of course, reduces our available memory and we can no longer send watch sounds or wrist apps. But I think this is going to work. It's worked in the past. And it says right here, data okay. That goes away really quick though. But it says on the bottom, data okay. So now when I get it out of communication mode, we have the correct date and the correct time. And we have all of our appointments and alarms programmed in there. There's our daily 5 o'clock wake up, 10 o'clock p.m. sleep. And that was it. We got our 12 p.m. lunch. And uh, here's our appointments. Here's how they show up. And it actually scrolls what the appointment title is. It shows you the uh, date and time. Tuesday the 14th, 10 a.m., doctor's appointment. And then I hit, um, if there's any other ones, I press the top button on up here. It says Friday, 217, oil change at, 10, at 11 a.m. Dentist at 9 a.m., Friday the 7th, 4-7, end of list. And anniversary mode, we have New Year's, Monday, 1-1 one, one of 2018, Happy New Year. And it even shows the uh, exclamation point, so it displays special characters as well. Well, um, punctual, anyway. Now, phone numbers show up in a peculiar fashion. You'll notice... The area code is on the top part of the screen. It says 603-555, and on the bottom half, it says 6565, with a letter P at the end for, um, would be pager, P for pager. And to-do list, we've got eggs, bacon, lettuce, OJ, laundry, hot dogs, ketchup, burgers, end of list. Okay. And again, like we did with the other list, we just press the top button to go to the next entry in the list. So our phone, so Dave Smith, there's his phone number, whoever he is. Press it again, we've got Jane Doe, Mary Jane. And if it's, again, if the, if the data is too long for the character width of the display, it scrolls it, uh, scrolls it past, end of list. So that's how you... That's how you do it. Now, how do we get rid of everything on the phone? Well, that's pretty easy. We just clear it out of here. What I'm going to do is... So what it does, every time it transfers data to the, to the watch... If I accidentally say phone, by the way, I mean watch. If I accidentally transfer, no, if I, if I, let's backfed a little bit. When it does a new transmission, it essentially wipes out whatever is on the phone. So I, and I think that's how it works. If I click do not send appointments and hit OK, and the anniversaries, I do not send the anniversary, and then I do not send the phone numbers. What's going to happen is, at every, every transmission that it sends to the watch clears out the memory on board and it replaces it with whatever you're sending it. So I can make running changes to my lists, send the data over, and whatever uh, doesn't happen to be on that batch doesn't get onto the, onto the watch. So let me demonstrate that now. So we should have no appointments, anniversaries, or phone numbers, but our list should still be intact. Let's send that to the watch. I'm going to put it in comm mode. There we 
go. And I'm going to hit OK. So unfortunately, if you have one of these watches or you plan on getting one, um, you kind of have to use Windows 98 or 95. It failed that time. Let's try it again. If you happen to have um, a modern computer, it's really difficult to get this to function. I think if you use the serial transmitter, um, it will work. But it really works best on an authentic piece of old hardware. There we go. Data transmission, OK. Oh, it, yeah, see, it, it just flashes on the screen, so getting it on camera is going to be hard. But anywho, I should have all of my alarms, my to-do list. Wait, where's... Oh, you'll notice that if I scroll... See, it only shows up the, men, the menus that are showing up on the, on the watch only reflect the data that I've transmitted. So the to-do list is gone. I'm sorry, the appointments are gone. The anniversary list is gone. The phone numbers list is also gone. And we just have our list and our alarms. Pretty neat. And that's how you do it. It's pretty cool. This technology is over 23 years old. 24 years old. See, 94. 23 years old, um, which uh, is crazy. I mean, it's just that's pretty advanced for 1994, I think. Um, so, yeah, we pretty much just confirmed my suspicions. This is definitely an older model watch than what was originally in that box. Um, so somebody may have just upgraded to a newer watch and kept the old one in that box, which is kind of nice. I'm glad they did that. Um, now I've got to go find a 150. <laughs> and I think I'm going to find one. I'm going to try to find another one, another another watch. Um, this was a... This is something that I'm going to put into my display cabinet at work. What I want to do is put together a display of all the devices that smartphones have made, it op made obsolete. And... Uh, this right here is going to go right in that cabinet. I'm going to try to find another one for my daily use because it's such a cool watch. But as of right now, I'm going to put in, I'm going to like try to find one of those Oxford English Dictionary pocket PC things. I'm going to put in one of these YO190 organizers. This very one, in fact. All the devices that smartphones have rendered obsolete. Something I've been rolling around in my head for quite some time, and um, I'm, I might even put an entire laptop in there. Because, I mean, uh, no, no, I can't do that. Laptops are not obsolete. They're just more powerful than smartphones still, so. Well, that was fun, and uh, thank you for watching. I know it's been a long video, but I hope you've enjoyed. I think it's time we shut down our PC and put the watch back in its box. Perfect. I like that. Ta-da! Shut her down. This has been a lot of fun. I'm glad I finally got this watch to work. It has not worked at all. I've been trying to get this thing working for quite some time, and it now finally I got it working. So, peace out.